All right, y'all, so today I'm going to share some items that sold on eBay for me, and I'm trying to focus on items that have a really high sell-through rate. So I'm going to show you the items that sold for me within like five to seven days of listing it. And I even have a couple items that sold for $100 or more. Now, the big thing for me is that the only reason why I'm making this shift within my business model is because thrifting right now is just really tough. Garage sale season for me in Arizona is starting to die down. So if you guys are trying to find items that sell really fast and bring in a decent amount of profit, this video is for you. And without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So first up, we got this shirt from Mizzen in Maine. Uh, Mizzen in Maine is one of those clothing brands. I still pick it up every time I see it, as long as it's in a good size. Um, extra large, double XL, those types of sizes always sell best for me. Size small, extra small. I'm not gonna say I wouldn't pick it up, but it just has to be a really dope style. Maybe, you know, maybe it's really cheap because a lot of these brands that I used to find for two, three, four dollars, these Goodwills, they're onto it now. So I ended up picking this shirt up for I think seven bucks, um, but it did sell in a decent amount of time. I think this one sold under a week. Size double XL always does pretty well. And I tried to focus on certain keywords. I put classic fit because I know uh, Mizzen and Maine has slim fit shirts as well. And some people are specifically looking for, uh, you know, classics and stuff like that. I made sure I put floral in there so that it could stand out. And I always try to make sure I say men's size, whatever it is. Some people, you know, just might put the size and just write large. Some people don't say men. But for me, I've just seen the most success when I say men's size, I spell out size, XL, double XL, whatever it might be. And this one sold really quickly. Next up, we got this camcorder and camcorders, Sony Handycams, just vintage cameras. Even though everybody's using iPhones now, these digital cameras still sell really quickly, always bringing a ton of profit, even if they don't work. I can still sell them for parts, sometimes 30, 40, or 50 bucks, depending on the model. Uh, this handy cam was of course from Sony. It's the CX100. This one sold for 80 bucks plus shipping. And anytime I come across these cameras, they usually don't include the charger or a battery. So I usually would just purchase an aftermarket battery and charger um, off of eBay. Usually sometimes $7, $10 for the camera, but as long as the camera will sell for a decent amount of profit, I don't mind investing a little more into the battery and the charger because you don't necessarily need to have the extra accessories for it but for me um, by having the battery by having the charger now it allows me to test it also the person that buys it they don't have to worry about a battery or a charger or anything like that so that way I can charge a premium for some of these stuff so keep that in mind as well when you guys are out there sourcing because sometimes you might just be a little lazy or just not want to test it and you might sell it for parts and then you realize that it actually was working and you only sold it for 30 bucks and you could have got 150 especially when you're dealing with those uh sony cybershot cameras and stuff like that because those those are some of the better ones to pick up so if you guys are out there sourcing and you find a sony handycam or even like an olympus or a nikon definitely grab that up next we got some cable modems and you guys know i love selling these uh internet modems this one is an asus ax 6,000 this one sold for 150 this was crazy because I actually traded somebody in the store for I think it was like maybe it was for like a vintage Nintendo game or something like that something that didn't sell for much but they actually wanted the the game itself and they traded me for this so of course they were excited I was excited because I knew it was going to be worth some money and this one sold for 150 um, this one was definitely not a quick flip this one took like three weeks for this to sell but you know on on average three weeks is a quick flip so keep that in mind but asus modems um asus netgear CenturyLink, all of those types of modems i usually always grab those up and depending on the model some will sell better than others um, i don't pick up every type of modem because you have to search some of these stuff by the model number or else you're going to be wasting your time and wasting your money but this one in particular sold for a good amount of profit next we're going to keep things going with these internet modems um, this one is a netgear c7800 the thing that kind of stands out when it comes to selling some of these modems some selling some of these routers if they look unique and if it has some type of like high tech look about it i usually always grab it up i don't even need to like search the the model number but I still do just because I, I want to know exactly what I'm purchasing. But the first time I seen this, I instantly knew it was going to be worth some money. The first time I sold one of these, this was maybe maybe last year or earlier in the year. This one sold for like 120 Now this one sold for 60 bucks. So the market on these things are shifting. They're shifting kind of quick. 
as you all know the economy is kind of terrible right now so stuff isn't selling for as much as it used to you know prices are fluctuating trends are changing relatively quickly nowadays but it is what it is i'm just glad i made a sale and i think i spent 10 bucks on that netgear uh, router so next sale is this g4 hat and g4 is one of those clothing brands that i love to find especially if i can find it in my size i usually do keep it um, g4 is more of a golf brand but their casual clothing it fits really well it looks really good it's it's kind of like a quiet luxury brand because they don't have a ton of logos and stuff like that but this had in particular a really big logo on the front and this hat was actually brand new with the tags but i'll throw in some b-roll because i actually got some footage when i found this hat it actually had a small little stain on the very top of the brim and because it had such a small stain i still decided to take a chance on it and i wasn't sure what to clean it with I usually clean everything with rubbing alcohol because that's just what I keep on hand but I actually decided to use a white eraser and I literally just erased the dirt that was on top of the hat and it went away so that was a really nice little technique if you guys ever come across something that might have a small little stain and you don't want to wet it or damage it or anything like that use a white eraser I know the pink ones tend to leave some residue leave, use a white eraser that will get it right off uh, this hat sold for 35 bucks plus shipping I think I spent six bucks on the hat. So next up is this pair of loafers from John Lobb. These shoes, uh, I'll throw in the B-roll for this one as well because I got this on camera. I paid six, seven dollars for these shoes. In really good condition. I didn't have to clean them up too much. This one sold for two hundred and thirty bucks plus shipping. Um, I thought they were gonna sell for like closer to four hundred dollars, but after doing some research, I realized that you know this shoe in particular sells for right around two thirty to about maybe maybe 300 depending on condition um but for me these shoes did have some minor stains on the suede so i didn't i didn't want to price it too high and then find myself sitting on it for too long but considering the fact that i only spent seven dollars on these shoes turning the seven dollars into 230 i'll do that all day long so keeping things going with items that i'm starting to learn more about uh, we got some golf clubs here i got a set of five clubs from callaway these are the callaway warbirds i wish i can tell you guys how to how i pick out golf clubs but i'm still in the stages now where any golf club that i see as long as it's uh like a say it's titleist or callaway or like i said scotty cameron i haven't found anything like that but there are certain brands tailor-made there are certain brands that i see and i instantly know that it's worth some money but more modern clubs i usually tend to pick those up especially if i can get it in a complete set and sometimes i split the the, the setup and i sell it individually sometimes like this i realize that it might just make more sense for me to sell it together i think i spent three bucks per club and i charge 18 dollars for shipping it actually cost about 16 dollars to ship all of these golf clubs out uh, once again i shipped it out via ups next up we got this netgear orby router and once again netgear is one of my favorite brands to sell especially when you're dealing with consumer electronics and stuff like that um, this one sold for 65 bucks I sell these Orbi routers anywhere between some some as low as 50 some as high as 90 bucks it just depends on the model number and if it's new or if it's older but for me anytime I find these I usually always do grab it up um, a lot of these thrift stores they're on to it as well so sometimes I've spent as much as 20 bucks for a set of three sometimes I've spent 10 bucks for just one of them but I usually always will still grab these up because the sell through rate is just so good that you know as long as it's not priced outrageously i can still make a decent amount of money on it next up we have this cell phone signal booster and to be 100 percent honest with you guys i didn't know what this was at first i just looked at it and it looked like something worth <laughs> something worth flipping it was kind of heavy in the store and it was only like five bucks i looked it up checked out the brand i seen that it was selling for like 70 to 90 dollars of course i just went ahead and listed it on ebay and it sold relatively quickly as well so i usually don't pick up random stuff i try to focus on items that i'm familiar with but this is another one of those types of stuff that once you develop a keen eye for quality and you know whether you're talking about clothes or you're talking about electronics you tend to just realize certain stuff might have some value and because this one had you know it had some weight to it i, I realized it was you know well made and it's all within about two weeks so definitely another good sale so i was telling you guys about all of these cameras that i love to sell and this is another great example this one is the canon power shot sx230 um really really good condition in this camera uh once again i had to purchase um uh, extra charger for this one because it did not have the charger 
and I threw in a memory card because I had an extra memory card laying around the house and all of those types of stuff just adds value. If you can add a memory card, if you can make sure you have the charger and the battery, all of those things just tend to add more value to it and I was really, really happy about this sale. So this one sold for 129 bucks and I spent 10 bucks on this camera. Took about two weeks for this one to sell, but once again, anytime I come across Canon power shots, Sony cyber shots, I usually always grab them up. Um, some don't have much value, so if it sells for less than 20 bucks, I'm definitely gonna pass on it. Uh, but for the most part, these Canon power shots really, really quick flip. And next up, we have this Guitar Hero guitar for the PlayStation 2. This one sold for 65 bucks, and it sold the exact same day that I listed it. Um, I think I spent five dollars on this guitar. And like I said, as soon as I listed it, it probably took maybe 45 minutes to an hour before it sold. So anytime items sell this fast for me, it just is a little reminder that I sold it probably a little too cheap or the demand is just that high. Um, I've sold several of these in the past. Um, I usually always grab them up and I ship it out via UPS as well, mainly because it's such a long package. Um, UPS, their rates are better than shipping it through UP, uh, the post office, especially anytime you're dealing with a larger package. So, same thing goes for the Guitar Hero guitars, golf clubs, baseball bats, all of those types of stuff typically uh, gets, gets shipped out via UPS. So that's all I got for today's video. If you guys enjoyed that one, drop a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite sale. Also, um, just drop a comment. Let me know how your sales are going, period, because I know right now the economy is tough. Um, a lot of people are, you know, trying to figure out how they can make some extra money. And I always am a huge proponent of eBay and just flipping stuff online. So let me know how you guys are doing in terms of business, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.